All right, hello everybody, and welcome back to another deep video tutorial. Today we're gonna to be talking about how to find and trade earnings gaps. Now this is a powerful setup that can often lead to great swing trades and also the start of great position trades as well to play that kind of quarter to quarter uh, trend in between different earnings reports. Now earnings gaps occur when the stock blows out earnings, they report an EPS surprise, or just beats expectations. Sometimes they can report negative numbers, but you know, improve their guidance, say something in the conference call that leads to institutions completely reevaluating their future expectations of revenue or EPS. And that causes a jump on earnings that can often be actionable on day one, such as with a firm here, or later on after some type of consolidation, whether that's a short range or even a full base, and then the start of a trend. Uh, so earnings gaps are definitely worth paying attention to. They're kind of a recent setup that has worked tremendously well and often, as I mentioned, can lead to powerful moves in different stocks. Uh, thinking back even to PLTR, obviously this has had a enormous run over the past two years. And if we just take a look at that number, about a thousand percent over the past two years, and this actually started, this whole move started with an earnings gap off the bottom of this base, which then led to the breakout through resistance that led to this larger move. Obviously there are bases along the way, but these type of earnings gaps can be great swing trades, such as this one right here, where we have a gap and go move and follow through the next few days. And they can also just be the start of longer term trends. So that's why it's worth paying attention to uh, this type of setup. Uh, but getting into today's video, we'll be talking about how to use DFU to find earnings gappers, uh, how to identify them post-market, as well as scan for them after the fact. And we'll be going through a few different screens that I use personally, and also presets in DFU uh, to make this a whole lot easier. Uh, so first things first, uh, the first screen that I wanna talk through was just this pretty simple screen that I've made called EPS This Week. And this allows you to kind of get a heads up about you know what stocks are reporting this week and our potential you know, earnings gappers and something to watch for the next week to see if they do meet the criteria. So this screen is super simple. I just used our earnings date filter and looked for something uh, tomorrow to the end of the week. And to do this, you just go ahead and type in earnings date, and then you can set a range here. And we will be making this a little bit smarter um, by allowing you to just say, you know, this week, and it'll always automatically adjust to that current week. Right now you do have to enter in the specific days that you're looking for, but it doesn't take too long and it allows you to basically screen for all the different stocks that are showing um, earnings, um, estimated earnings dates for that range that you set. And you can see I also have some relative strength parameters here just to make sure that I'm not looking at stocks that are completely below moving averages. That's just something that I personally don't focus on, but you know, if that's your thing, you can go ahead and exclude uh, this criteria. This just kind of helps filter out a lot of the lower quality names. Uh, but as I mentioned in deep view, uh, we've got these earnings flags here. So when you're just doing, running a normal screen, if you see a red flag, that means that earnings are coming up within the next few days. If you see a gray flag, that means earnings are coming up maybe the week, uh, the next week, the week after that. So they're, they're on the horizon, they're not here just yet, but definitely pay attention when you've got this red earnings flag. And this simple screen can help you identify, you know, uh, what stocks are reported earnings uh, within the next few days. With that said, uh, once you know an earnings you know date has appeared and there's stocks that you're focused on and are potentially looking to execute on, uh, the best post-market screen that you can run every single day when a lot of things are reporting is this one right here. And this is a preset in deep view. If you just go ahead and type in post-market under screen and presets. So again, click this drop down menu, go over to screen and presets or just type in post-market. If you go to the pre slash post-market folder, you can go ahead and click this one post-market movers and this will give you that one, uh, the one that I'm walking through right now. And what this does is basically, it looks for stocks that are gapping up um, on earnings. And you can see right now we've got UPST today in post-market gapping up 25% on 105% of the normal daily average volume. So this is a really important data point that I definitely wanna cover here today. Um, obviously the post-market change is basically showing, uh, you know, the change in post-market. You can see here on the five minute chart in extra hours, the powerful move we're seeing. But you know, sometimes stocks just gap up a little bit and will fade the next day or it doesn't lead to sustained trend. And what we're looking for really in after hours is game changing volume. And this data point right here is really helpful to do just that. So again, what this is, is basically comparing the post-market volume, so only the post-market volume, volume that happened after the earnings report, 
and it's comparing that to the normal 50 day average volume. Uh, we've also got a 20 day variant, but right now I'm using the 50 day. It'll show pretty much the same thing, uh, but it's basically comparing the post market volume to what the stock normally trades on uh, you know, a single day. And why that's significant is because we don't just want to use you know, relative volume and comparing it to post market because earnings volume is always going to be a lot, lot larger than normal post market volume. Instead, what we're doing here is comparing this volume to the normal average 50 day volume. And what this tells us is, you know, is there big institutional interest? And what I kind of look for is over about 40% um, post market volume versus the 50 day average is pretty significant. And definitely over 100% is very significant. And this one as well, I don't know anything about that about this company, but looks like just kind of a, a small cap penny stock, but it's doing 237% of its normal uh, 50 day average volume. And you can see today, actually, it had huge volume. So this is just a stock in play based on news or a catalyst or, or whatever. But a more typical play like UPST on earnings after market, it's already doing 105% of the normal average daily volume. So that's a number that we want to definitely focus on and potentially add to our focus list to act on the next day. Uh, scrolling through the list here as well, we've got some other ones. SMCI also reported earnings. Um, it's got pretty significant volume. Again, there's a heavily short name as well. Um, Fresh also 47%, SWTX 50, uh, 56%. So a lot of these are pretty significant volume. Um, and uh, you know, Redfin a little bit less, 23%. You know, Dave a lot less than that, only uh, about 7%. You can see we grayed out because it's not too significant. So again, you wanna be focusing more on the ones that are really showing a lot of volume compared to normal. Uh, then you always wanna analyze, you know, what caused uh, the breakout. And here in DFU, you can hover over the earnings report here, down here in the stats table. And if this isn't open, you can always click it right here, this icon. If you hover, hover over the report, you can see that we, they reported $26 a share uh, in terms of earnings. The estimate was actually negative, minus 0 0.04, so huge surprise. And revenue also was up 22% compared to the estimate. So they destroyed earnings, destroyed sales. This is also a heavily shorted name. This is a name that can run in the past and you know, overall in the past has made some tremendous moves after earnings. Um, so this is the type of name that we're trying to look for in terms of a potential earnings gap and go, or you know, some type of other setup after earnings. If we bring up MNDY, this is a recent earnings gap. This also showed up in that post-market screen. Uh, and you can see huge volume, the highest volume ever on the day of the gap. And you could either play it you know, intraday during this actual day, um, playing a reversal, whatever the setup is, an opening range breakout, or now it's setting up an inside day right at the space pivot. You could watch for a little bit more consolidation, a tight area to form right after here, or just a continuation up from the inside day. Um, but basically finding a spot where you can manage risk tightly and logically after the actual day one of the gap. So again, uh, what we're talking about today is identifying and finding earnings gaps. And to do that, we talked about the flags. We talked about the um, earnings upcoming this week screen. We talked about uh, the post-market mover screen to actually identify before the gap up the day before uh, to identify these and have these put you on, uh, put them on your daily focus list to potentially act on day one, whether it's an opening range breakout, intraday based breakout. But then the second part of this is after a breakout, you can still look for uh, additional setups such as a tight range, an undercut rally of a key level. Um, you know, often the 10 EMA catches up to price. And at that point, there's a test of the 10 EMA. If we bring up Twilio, this is a name I'm, uh, is a good example. We've got initial huge gap up, strong move up. And now it's kind of kind, kind of gone quiet and tight and it's pulling back in 10 EMA. And if it reverses back up through this high, that would be a bounce off the 10 EMA moving average after some nice consolidation after that earnings gap. Uh, so there's a few different ways to play these, but um, overall for a variety of trading styles, earnings gaps are great to take note of and to be aware of, especially when uh, the overall name is something of interest. It's of interest and high quality uh, for can slim, swing trading, whatever your style uh, might be. Uh, so one last thing I want to talk about today is Affirm. Let's bring that up. And again, this is another example of we've had a nice move gap and go off the open. If we go to a five minute time frame and let's just go to a single chart and let's turn off the extended hours. Here we've got an initial move off the open, then consolidation and tight. And now what we're doing is basically forming a nice tight range here, which if it reconfirms up could be a potential entry point. And going back to a daily chart that lines up with basically an inside day 
that's potentially setting up for continuation higher. So this is similar to um, MNDY, watching for either further development of this range, this flag, whatever you want to call it, and reconfirmation up, or just watching for another set pullback to that base pivot. Uh, one other recent example that I'm watching currently is pins. Uh, so this had uh, this has been a little bit weaker. You can see it's just kind of consolidating more like a stage one than a stage two, like a firm or some of the others we focused on. But they did have a really nice earnings gap. If we hover over here, you can see the actually, uh, you know, didn't meet expectations on earnings beat on revenues, but they still had a gap up. So it's often the reaction that is actually more important than these numbers themselves. But regardless, we've had a nice gap up and now it's starting to form a consolidation. We're pulling back slightly on declining volume. We had a nice upside reversal after an undercut of the gap up low here. And I'm basically watching for follow through to the upside. We'll see if that actually happens. But often we get a gap up, some initial push higher, or in this case, just immediate pullback, gradual pullback, setting up for a potential U-turn uh, and consolidation higher. I did want to share an example from the Trader's Handbook, which is basically um, the our book that's coming out in a few months in May. This is FSLR in 2022. We've got a strong gap up on earnings of prize, also improved guidance. And then we have continuation fall through up. And then in this case, we form a nice and tight consolidation, tight range here, which would have been actionable on the range breakout and fall through up. And from here, we had a really nice trend. And this actually started a longer term trend as well. So there's a variety of different ways to play these. Again, we're talking about finding them and identifying them. And then it's up to you to decide whether you like to play it uh, after, you know, post market, after the actual report, uh, day one on an opening range breakout or intraday base breakout, or, you know, thereafter on a range breakout like we had with this one, or just, an, you know, a whole other base. Uh, to give an example for a whole other base, let's bring up Snowflake. This had a strong earnings gap up, but didn't really progress much from this range breakout. I actually tried it here, got stopped out, uh, but then we set up a whole new base and it was actionable up the right hand side of this base and still potentially setting up for a longer term trend where this could have been kind of the catalyst to really kickstart things. Remember PLTR, the very start of this 1000% move happened after it had been basing for quite some time and then had a strong earnings gap on improved uh, earnings and all that. Uh, Snowflake had a nice EPS surprise, revenue beat as well, and then it's setting up this nice base and we'll see if we can fall through to the upside um, and you know see if it can actually trend. Right now it hasn't really done much, uh, but still potentially forming some type of cup and handle here and we'll see if it can fall through to the upside. But uh, hopefully this tutorial you know gives you a sense of how I use different screens to identify these and you know the usefulness of the setup and, and how to play different ones. Um, one, a few other screens I did wanna mention I've got my Richard Moglin gap ups and strong moves uh, screen. This is also a preset. This just helps you find stocks that had strong moves throughout the day. Uh, there isn't much today actually on this list, but this will show up all the earnings gaps. So um, UPST tomorrow will be on this list. Also, that we have the Qualmagi episodic pivot uh, preset, which you can find as well. And this looks for much the same thing here. Looks for percent change today above 7.5%, close above the yesterday's high, dollar volume a certain amount, ADRs or common stocks. And this will bring up some great episodic pivots um, as well as earnings gaps. And ASTS here, when I actually made the original tutorial for this episodic pivot preset, ASTS was the example I used. And you can see right here on this earnings gap, it was also kind of an announcement of additional partnerships. This led to a fantastic move of, if we go ahead and uh, measure here, Fantastic move of, you know, several hundred percent, 800 uh, percent from that close all the way here. So, again, these earnings gaps, however you want to play it, whether you're playing day one, whether you're playing a range after an initial move higher, whether you're playing a 10 EMA pullback, whether you're playing a base breakout after this or high tight flag after this earnings gap. Uh, these can be just a signal to start telling you that, hey, institutions are accumulating stock. We want to ride that trend. Uh, so let's try to find an entry and manage our risk and see if it works out. So hopefully this video has been helpful um, and let me know any questions or comments you have below and I'll see you guys in future videos. Take care. Bye.